This video is on assigning oxidation numbers by looking at a Lewis structure. So oxidation numbers are another way that we have of figuring out where electron density might be in a molecule. So oxidation numbers is just an accounting procedure for electrons, and it's particularly useful when we're looking at oxidation reduction reactions, because then it's easy to see which atom has lost electron density and which atom has gained electron density. Remember that oxidation reduction reactions involve transferring electron density in a chemical reaction from one atom to another atom. So let's look at these three different ways that we have of talking about charge in a molecule. So first we talked about formal charge. So in formal charge, we assume that electrons that are shared between atoms in a Lewis structure are shared equally. So if we look at this sort of funky um, Lewis dot structure for carbon dioxide, then the way that we did that is something called the bond cutting method. And so we would go through and sort of slice up the electrons in this bond, and then we would say that the formal charge is equal to the actual number of valence electrons on that atom divided by the number of assigned electrons. And so the way we assign electrons then is we would go through and count the number of electrons around an atom once we have cut the bond and shared these shared electrons equally. So right here, right, this electrons that I've circled, that represents a pair of electrons. And if we assume that the carbon and oxygen share them equally, then we can give one electron to the carbon and one electron to the oxygen. That would be a way of equally dividing them. So let's count the number of electrons around this oxygen, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. And of the shared pair, it's going to get one. So one, that makes seven. So the formal charge on this oxygen would be its normal number of valence electrons, which is six in the atom by itself. And in this molecule, it appears to have seven around it. So six minus seven is a negative one. So this oxygen would have a minus one formal charge then, when we assume that there's equal sharing. Then we learned for diatomics that you could calculate partial charges based on assigning the electron density in proportional proportional to an electronegativity ratio. So we're basically giving the um, more electronegative atom a percentage of the shared electrons based on how much greater its electronegativity is than the combined total of the two electronegativities of the bonded atoms. And that's an approximate method that works well for diatomic molecules. For other molecules, you have to come up with a scheme and, and use quantum theory to calculate the actual electron density and then divide that up in some way. So oxidation numbers kind of like the way we assigned for formal charge. Formal charge, we assumed equal sharing. And now what we're going to do is assume completely unequal sharing. So partial charge is kind of in between. Assume something in between that. So now we're going to assume that all of the shared electrons get assigned to the more electronegative atom. So it's like treating the molecule as though it were completely ionic. So let's do that for carbon dioxide. We'll use the uh, lower, the more stable resonance structure of carbon dioxide this time. So we're going to calculate oxidation number rather like we did for formal charge. We're going to look at the ordinary valence on the atom. And then we're going to subtract from that. We're going to assign a certain number of electrons n for that particular atom A, assuming complete separation of the atom. So I'm going to say that this is the oxidation method. All right, so let's talk about how we do that. So let's think about these shared electrons right here between this carbon and oxygen so that we can assign an oxidation number to this oxygen. So these shared electrons are being tugged on by both the carbon and the oxygen. So in this oxidation number method, what we're going to assume is that the more electronegative atom gets all of the electrons. So I'm going to draw a little swooping line right here to indicate that we're going to assign all of these electrons in this bond to the oxygen atom, which is more electronegative than carbon. So now we're going to count the number of electrons around this oxygen. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we've assigned 8 electrons to that oxygen. So if we're ca calculating the oxidation number on oxygen then, it's oxygen's normal number of valence electrons, which is 6, minus 8. And so that gives us an oxidation number of negative 2. This carbon then. Let's look at it. So um, we're going to assign these electrons right here to the more electronegative atom, like that. And so this carbon atom right now has zero electrons around it. So the oxidation number for the carbon would be 
normally has four. We're going to subtract from it the number of electrons that are assigned to it, which is zero. And so that gives us an oxidation number of plus four. So in this compound, carbon is in the plus four oxidation state. And this oxygen over here would be in the minus two oxidation state. So that's how we can assign oxidation numbers based on Lewis structures. Let's do another example of doing this using a slightly more complicated molecule. So this molecule is the molecule acetic acid. It's the acid that's in vinegar. So we're going to go through and use this method to figure out what are the oxidation numbers on all of the atoms in this molecule. So first, let's go through and divide up the electrons. So I'm going to um, get my pen out here. We're going to go through and draw those little um, curly lines to um, group the electrons in each bond with the more electronegative atom. So between carbon and hydrogen, which one is more electronegative? Well, carbon is. So we're going to assign these electrons all of these electrons go to carbon. OK, so now right here we've got a carbon to a carbon single bond. So which atom is more electronegative, the carbon or the carbon? Well, they're both the same, right? Of course. So they have the same electronegativity. So in this case, we're going to divide those electrons up equally. So I'm just going to draw a slash through the line, indicating that we've divided the electrons equally. So between this carbon and this oxygen, well, oxygen's more electronegative, so that gets all the electrons. And the same here for this oxygen, gets all of the electrons. And finally, we've got this hydrogen to oxygen bond, so we're going to give all of the shared electrons to oxygen. So that's the good way to start, is to go through your molecule and assign all of the electrons to the more electronegative atom. If you have two atoms that have the same electronegativity that are bonded together, you're going to divide those electrons equally. All right, so now we're ready to go in and figure out the oxidation number. So for example, this hydrogen right here, and in fact all of these hydrogens since they're the same, um, and this hydrogen over here. So the oxidation number is going to be the normal valence, 1, minus the number of assigned electrons. And there are no electrons assigned to the hydrogens in this structure. So the oxidation number is plus 1 for all of these hydrogens. So all these hydrogens are in the plus 1 oxidation state. So let's look at this carbon right here. So um, this carbon has assigned to it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 electrons. So that oxidation number then would be the normal valence on carbon, which is 4 minus 7 in this case. And so 4 minus 7 is negative 3. So this carbon is in the oxidation state of negative 3. So it's a negative 3 oxidation state. What about this carbon right here? Well, it's got one electron assigned to it, and that's all. So this carbon right here has an oxidation number of 4, its normal valence, minus 1, which is plus 3. So this brings out an interesting point, that in one molecule, you can have the same atom that will have, be in different oxidation states. And it really depends on what it's bonded to. And that makes sense, because different atoms are going to strip electron density away from an atom based on what they're bonded to, right? All right, so let's do the oxygens then. Um, this oxygen and this oxygen, it turns out we'll have the same oxidation number. Let's count the electrons around this top oxygen. One, two, three, four, and then in the bond, five, six, seven, eight. We get to count all of those electrons. So the oxidation number, and the same thing here, we would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. So the oxidation number is going to be the normal valence, six minus eight is negative two. So both of these oxygens are in the minus two oxidation state. So if acetic acid were going to react in some way, it's possible that the bonding might change. And in that process, we might end up transferring electron density um, away or f to some of these atoms. And so their oxidation numbers would change in the final products. So for example, if we were to burn acetic acid, it's an organic compound, so it would react with oxygen and produce carbon dioxide and water. So in that case, we've already done carbon dioxide. And we've seen that um, in carbon dioxide, the oxidation state of carbon is plus 4. So you'll notice that the oxidation number of carbon in this compound is not plus 4. It's negative 3 for this carbon and plus 3 for this carbon. 
So when we further oxidize this molecule by burning it and adding oxygen to it, we're going to transfer electrons away from the carbon to get it in the plus four oxidation state. So those electrons are going to be transferred away from carbon and towards some oxygens. So right here, these oxygens, um, even though they have complete octets, they're in the zero oxidation state. Remember, the oxidation state of any element by itself is zero. So this oxygen can pick up some more electrons to get into the minus two oxidation state, which is what it has over here in this side of the reaction. So all of these oxygens are in the minus two oxidation state. And we can see that either from using our oxidation number rules, or if we wanted to real simply, we could look at the Lewis structure like we've just learned how to do. So let's do that as one final example. So here's water. We're going to divide up the electrons, so oxygen gets the lion's share of the electrons being the more electronegative atoms, so we're going to assign all of those electrons to oxygen. And we're going to count them up for oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so the oxidation number is its normal valence, so oxygen normally has six electrons around it as the plain old atom, minus eight. That gives us the minus two again that we expect, and the hydrogens are going to be plus one in this case. So that's how we can assign oxidation numbers by looking at a Lewis dot structure.